Welcome to Zeiss Reverse Engineering, your software solution for surface reconstruction and tool correction. In this video, you'll get to know the user interface, you'll learn how to import data, and we'll talk about important mouse commands and selections. Let's dive right in. When you open Zeiss Reverse Engineering, or ZRE, as I'll call it from now on, you'll see the Start screen. Here, you can open an existing project, create a new project, or select one of your recently used projects. Let's start with a new project. The new project opens with the coordinate system displayed in the center of the cat window. You can hide and unhide the coordinate system with Control-0. First, let's import data. The easiest way is to use drag and drop. Alternatively, you can use import and select the type of file you want to import. You can import point clouds, meshes, and geometries. CRE supports lots of different data formats, such as text, CSV, STL, and step files, for example. For a complete list of all supported data formats, have a look at the CRE user guide. You can find it under Help, User Guide. In the user guide, you'll also find a list of shortcuts you can use in size reverse engineering. The most important ones are probably Ctrl-Z for undo and Ctrl-Y for redo. Okay, back to the Xeri user interface. The data is displayed in the cat window. The cat window is your main work area. You can look at the imported data from different angles and positions. You can hold the left mouse button to move the mesh the right mouse button to rotate it, and the mouse wheel to zoom in and out. You can also press and hold the mouse wheel and move the mouse up or down to do that. Alternatively, you can use the navigation cube in the bottom left corner. Click any plane or edge to adjust the view, and use the arrows to rotate the mesh. So much for the main work area. Now let's look at the rest of the user interface. At the top, you have the menu bar. It contains the basic commands for ZRE, such as save as, undo, redo, import and export, settings and help, where you can access the user guide. When you click the little arrow underneath, the model explorer opens. It contains all the elements in your project, to keep things organized, elements are categorized based on their type. Meshes and point clouds, for example, are in the category points. Elements you create in the ZRE software will be under surfaces, curves, wires, or bodies, depending on what they are. This will make it easier to keep track of your process steps. In the Model Explorer, you can hide and unhide elements or entire categories, copy, delete, and rename the element, and access the properties. Next to the Model Explorer is the Action Bar. It contains all the functions required for reverse engineering and is divided into categories. You can create elements from scanning data, for example, or with other elements in your project. You can edit elements, perform analyses, and you can easily search for a function here as well. When you select an action in the action bar, the corresponding submenu opens. Here, you can select a category and access the associated functions. When you click on a function, the function dialog opens. Now you're ready to execute whatever function you chose. This might seem a bit abstract now, but will become second nature once you start working with Siri. Okay, let's move over to the right side. Here, you'll find the toolbar. The toolbar contains various selection modes, some of which we'll use in other tutorials. But here's a quick example. If element selection is active and I click on the mesh, the entire mesh is selected. To deselect it, use Control and the left mouse button. By comparison, if I activate subselection, I can select parts of the mesh. 
Use Alt to add points. Shift to deselect points. And Control to invert the current selection. To clear the point selection, click here. For more information about selections, look at the user guide. There, you'll find the description of each selection mode, as well as the key combinations associated with it. The toolbar also allows you to adjust the cat surface shading and the visibility of meshes. And if your data ever gets lost in the cat window, you can make it reappear by using Fit to Screen. At the bottom of the cat window is the sub toolbar. Here, you can take a screenshot for reporting purposes, for example. Now, to use this function, you need to define a storage location for the screenshots. To do that, open Settings and set a desired folder. The sub toolbar also offers options to change the transparency of elements. With the highlighting function, you can increase the transparency of elements temporarily by hovering over them. Set a value here and click this icon to turn the highlighting function on or off. With the other four tools, you can adjust the transparency of all or certain elements in your project. That's it for this short introduction to the ZRE user interface. To start working with the software, take a look at the video Edit and Align Meshes in Zeiss Reverse Engineering. And if you're looking for a more comprehensive training, check out the basic training Zeiss Reverse Engineering. You'll find the link in the description below.